Hello everyone and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie looking at 5 more fish that are perfect for an 80 litre tank plus. Now one thing to note when I say 80 litres, this does need to be an oblong tank with as much floor space as possible and preferably at least 100 centimetres in length. An 80 litre cube is considerably smaller in terms of space available for fish and as they tend to care more about horizontal space than they do vertical, an oblong tank is always going to be the way to go. Also, these different species can live together as tank mates, as they are all on the boisterous tide and so can cope with each other's speed or dominance with minimum amount of issues. And we'll kick the list off with a classic, the tiger barb, a fish I suspect most new fish keepers and especially young children covet thanks to their very striking and reminiscent stripy orange patterning. Being dart shaped and travelling in a closely knit school, tiger barbs have a delightfully mischievous air to them as they explore everything new you add in their environment. They are also hardy and perfectly happy in a wide range of tank styles, from semi pear to densely planted, just so long as they have enough members in their shoal. They do have a bit of a reputation for being a bit aggressive. Males certainly do spar with each other an awful lot as the females come into breeding age, which can see them chasing around the tank and battling nose to nose in a slightly alarming fashion, although they only very rarely cause each other any harm. Luckily though, tigers don't get particularly large, and even a big female is only going to max out at about 1.5 to 2 inches in length, and the males are slightly smaller and more streamlined. So while they look menacing, they tend to focus their aggression on each other rather than the other fish in the tank. That being said, I would not keep them with any fish that has very soft flowing fins such as guppies or the longer finned betters, as these are going to be much too tempting for a tiger and they are soon going to get nipped. But most fish that have shorter fins or a good turn of speed make perfectly fine companions for tigers. And sticking with the classics, as well as the stripes, I can't leave out Zebra Danios from the list, a species very much seen as a beginner fish, like that's something to be ashamed of, these hardy little fish are perfect for high energy community tanks. This speed also gives zebras a distinct advantage when living with other fish, such as the aforementioned tiger barb, as their constant movement draws attention to themselves, but they're generally much too fast for fin nippers to catch up with them. Zebra danios are only small and typically only grow to about 2 inches long, and as they are very long, streamlined fish in shape, they never feel like they take up much tank space. But what they lack in size, they make up for in pure manic. These are truly hyperactive fish that add a lot of energy to a tank. This being the case, they do very well in tanks that have a lot of water flow, such as a streamscape, and as they make use of the entire tank space available to them, they can feel a little bit like they are everywhere all at once. Being a Danio as well though, zebras are supremely hardy and they can live in a cool water tank, just so long as the temperature remains anywhere between 10 and 25 degrees, then they will be just fine. Much like the next fish on the list. The Odessa barb can live in cooler tanks as well, though not quite so cold as zebras, Odessa's preferring a temperature range from between 15 and 25. A larger cousin of the tiger barb, they grow to about 2.5 inches in length, and while that does sound small, they are very solid and so they can have a rather heavy presence in the tank. They're not quite so brave as the tigers neither, Odessas do need some cover, especially when they're younger, as well as they can become really quite shy and spend most of their time hiding. But as they age, they tend to become much braver, and certainly if you have dither fish around, such as the zebra danios, then they will be out and about in the open for the vast majority of the time. Just bear in mind with these fish that they are a very slow burn, and when you look at youngsters in the fish shop, you may well be disappointed to see just a plain little silver fish. This is because Odessas can take up to a year to reach full maturity. This is when the males will really start to display their breeding colours. They can actually start to breed earlier, but the males definitely improve with age. And given the time, then you'll see why they are worth the wait. The males display a wonderful range of patterns and colours, from sparkling blue iridescence, deep black coloured netting, and spots and stripes galore. They are certainly an eye-catching fish that you would never expect considering how drab they appear when they're in the shops. For the most part, tetras are an easy group to accommodate, and there are only a few species that are commonly kept that need to have a bit of a warning sign attached to them. 
and one of those is definitely the Serpa Tetra. These chunky little red tetras also only grow up to about 2 inches in length, and they tend to occupy the lower two-thirds of the tank, and they're also considerably less active than the other species in this list, especially as they age and become more territorial. As youngsters, they are model citizens, happily schooling together and leaving all the other fish alone, but as they grow up, their tolerance for others can diminish, and they will chase other fish away from the little territories that they make. When they do so as well, they can be quite nippy, both with other fish and with each other. But at least while they're not chasing anything, Serpi Tetra tend to be quite still, patiently awaiting either food, a mate, or a challenge to come along, and so they can bring a nice air of calm to a tank that has a lot more active species in it. This being the case, it does mean that barbs and very fast dither fish make perfect companions for Serpi Tetra as they're either too confident and they just ignore the tetra's temper, or they're simply too quick for the serps to actually catch. And lastly, you're going to need a bottom-dwelling fish that will keep the substrate clear of leftover food while coping with all the activity above, and here the Sturby Cory fits the bill perfectly. Being a Cory, they are supremely harmless and laid back and will spend the vast majority of their time on the tank substrate looking for food or resting beneath bits of driftwood or decorations. But equally, being an armoured catfish, they have the resilience to put up with a bit of curious nipping and the general barging that goes along with more boisterous fish. Sturbys are also a little larger than the other Cory's, growing up to 3 inches and so are better able to hold their own when it comes to getting food, bearing in mind the fact that barbs will also come down to the substrate in search of food and tend to do so in a rather mob-handed fashion, which can prevent more sensitive fish from feeding. Sturbys, though, are perfectly happy to push their way to the front when they need to. All in all, though, an 80-litre tank is a nice size to experiment with different groups and types of fish when you're building a community. Just do remember that all of the species above need to be kept in a group of at least four to six individuals, and so make sure your tank is large enough to accommodate them all once they reach full size. Anywho though, I hope you've enjoyed this little video, just with five ideas of fish that are perfect for a boisterous 80 litre tank. Happy fish keeping everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye!